Hello everyone, sorry about the delay. Apparently I have an outdated laptop. Um, <clears throat> so my name is Lei Chai, I work for Stratus Technology. Um, um, so this presentation, um, uh, I'll talk about some a set of changes that um, we propose to the KVM dirty memory tracking mechanism uh, to facilitate a uh, performance checkpointing solution. Um, so for those, those of you who are not familiar with checkpointing, it's a technique that uh, is used to achieve software for tolerance. Um, it's, it does that by um, connecting a pair of physical servers, then periodically pause the VM and capture the states and send uh, the captured states from the, uh, the active server to the standby server. Um, and uh, for those of you uh, who are familiar with checkpointing, you've probably heard of or know of uh, Colo, which um, is different from a traditional uh, checkpointing solution in that it's, it, it does the checkpoint on demand. Um, so it doesn't periodically um, pause the VM, but it, it, it does it when it deemed necessary. Um, but this presentation, I'll, um, the in this presentation, I talk about the traditional checkpointing solutions and uh, um, and the changes uh, that we propose. Um, so I'll, I'll go into the checkpointing in a little detail. Then um, I talk about the motivations for the changes, and then I go into a little detail about the, the actual changes. <clears throat> So in a traditional checkpointing uh, solution, um, a protected guest uh, runs inside a virtual machine. Then, then the hypervisor will, you know, you know, the user space can instruct the hypervisor to pause the VM periodically and capture the states, um, the state include the device state and the memory state. Um, then it will. Um, um, send the capture state from the active side to the uh, standby side. Um, in, in the case of uh, a failure of the active server, um, the, stand, the standby side will have sufficient uh, state to resume the guest operation from the last checkpoint. So the uh, um, so I talked about the, you, you periodically um, pause the VM. So that period is uh, what we call an epic, and uh, within an epic, the guest has a time uh, has uh, it will run for a period of time, then you go into a checkpoint state where it's paused. So this is a, a simple diagram of uh, a checkpointing uh, system where um, the guest will run through uh, epics, and it's each epic it will transfer the states from the active host to the standby host, and in case of a failure, the um, the standby side will take over using the, the last checkpoint. Um, here's a another diagram with a little more detail. Um, <clears throat> so for each, um, for each checkpoint, um, it, will, it will hold the IOs uh, due to correctness. It will hold the IOs, and it will tra transfer the states to the standby side and get acknowledgment, then it will release the IOs. Um, So uh, there are a few known uh, open source checkpointing solutions. The aforementioned, the Colo uh, is the only one that's active now. Um, then there's also uh, Remus, Kamari, and Michael checkpointing, which are not active anymore. Um, and there's also some uh, proprietary checkpointing solution, the VMFTs, the Stratus Avron software, um, and Avia solutions. Um, so what's the motivation for um, the changes? Um, so a checkpointing system, uh, it's all about performance. Um, so a checkpointing solution, a traditional checkpointing solution where it periodically pauses the VM, it performs anywhere from uh, over 90% um, compared to a non-checkpointing VM. 
for CPU intensive loads to under 25% for high bandwidth, low latency network intensive loads. Um, a for commercial workloads, it typically perform around 50%. Um, and um, now those numbers, the 50%, those numbers are, you know, it's, uh, we obtain it from running a, you know, Stratus Everon software um, against benchmarks and realistic uh, commercial um, applications. And uh, we run that on the latest, like the Broadwell system and the latest Intel platforms um, to get that uh, 50%. Um, so uh, why perform uh, at a 50%? Uh, because, you know, because they need to periodically pause the VM and they need to do a checkpoint. Um, and you can see, um, the, as we find out, the majority of the uh, checkpoint time is spent on um, obtain the dirty pages uh, from the KVM and process those and transfer them to the standby side. Um, so the longer the checkpoint, um, the less time the guest will be running and doing um, actual work. So there's direct correlation between um, the checkpoint time or the dirty memory harvest time to the performance of the system. So the current uh, memory tracking mechanism that um, used by KVM it uses a, a VM-sized dirty a VM-sized bitmap to track dirty memories. Um, it works well with live migration, but um, in a checkpointing a traditional checkpointing system, the number of uh, dirty pages is bounded. Um, so uh, in a Strata system, the, for a commercial workload. You can have uh, per second. You can have uh, uh, from 150 to 1500 checkpoints per second, uh, and the number of dirty pages each second, uh, each checkpoint is around 300 to 3000. Um, that compared to over 2 million pages for a gig VM. So if you use bitmap, you have to if you use bitmap to tra track dirty pages, you have to traverse the uh, that huge bitmap to get to those, um, you know, 300 to 3,000 dirty pages, and and it's ex very expensive. You have to do that every checkpoint, so it's very time consuming, and you also need to copy the bitmap to the user space, and that's every checkpoint, and it's very, um, you know, costly, also. So, <clears throat> um, for the for the, change proposed, for the proposed changes, um, we want it to be easily portable to you know, different kernel versions. Um, so far, we have uh, ported to uh, various versions of CentOS and uh, Ubuntu and SUSE. And we don't want to change any existing KVM uh, functionalities. So we use new IOCTOs, like new um, new functions for communication between the user space and the KVM. And we also want it to coexist with the current um, dirty memory logging facilities. Um, and, and we want it also to be usable by live, live migration. Um, another goal is to we want to avoid dynamic memory allocations um, and freeing during a checkpointing cycle because um, those operations are unpredictable, um, and we, on, we only want to do it when we enter or exit um, checkpointing mode. Um, so um, those are the changes, uh, proposed changes. Um, you know, uh, because the bitmap is very costly um, for a um, checkpointing solution to track dirty memory. We, Suppose you use a, a compact list of dirty pages. Um, you can have one list per uh, online vCPU. Um, and we do that because we want to avoid logging, uh, locking uh, when vCPUs dirty memories. Um, and there's also one global list um, that's for keep track of the dirty pages, uh, the pages that are dirtied by the KVM. Um, and it also um, 
attend those overflow dirty pages for from uh, per vCPU list. And because it's a list, um, uh, we want to avoid duplicates. Uh, well, duplicates are there, there's they are fine if you're using a bitmap, uh, but it's very desired because this, the list is has a fixed size. Um, and we've seen tons of duplicates, uh, mostly by KVM, during the guest memory, you know, when they're doing guest time updates and among other things. And now we can use the current bitmap to um, to, to keep track of the, uh, the duplicates. Um, um, so another change is um, when the dirty list is full, um, we need to force a v VM exit um, because each um, it, it, during each checkpoint, the number of dirty pages is bounded because of the limit, uh, limited buffering space on the host. Um, and we don't want to exceed buffer size because when it happens, the primary, the active, and the standby side will diverge, and it will very, it will be very costly to do resynchronizations. Um, so, uh, when the list is full, we want to force a VM exit all the way to user space. Then the user space can, um, you know, start can start a checkpoint. Um, and do its things, uh, and and those um, the um, the threshold um, of the um, of the um, the dirty pages, the size of the dirty page is usually cal uh, calculated by user space, and it will be passed down to the KVM during initialization. Um, so those are the new uh, IOCTOs. Um, we have uh, initialization and the cleanup um, IOCTO, which um, during initialization, the user space can specify the max number of dirty pages per checkpoint that serves as a threshold that the KVM uses to um, exit, user sp uh, exit VM uh, when um, when there are too many dirty pages. Then also um, the uh, IOCTO for activate and deactivate um, the checkpointing mode. And for that IOCTO, the KVM will allocate a free dirty list and or enable or disable dirty traps. Um, those three uh, new IOCTOs are used during a checkpoint cycle. So at uh, each checkpoint, um, the user space can tell KVM to prepare for a new checkpoint cycle. The KVM resets all the you know, counters or indexes for the dirty list. And then the user space can fetch the dirty list um, and, and using the second IOCTO. Um, that, that IOCTO supports fetch from multiple user space threads, so you can have multiple, multiple threads running user space fetch the dirty list at the same time. That just you know helps with the uh, performance. Um, another octo is used by the user space to um, rearm the dirty traps. So and when the user space gets all the dirty dirty pages, um, it can tell KVM to reset um, the dirty traps uh, for all the pages that dirtied from the last cycle. Um, so this is the flow uh, from the point of view of the user space. Um, so it, when it start the checkpointing cycle, it, it will need to enter the checkpointing mode first. Um, so it do it init and to enable the checkpointing mode. Then for each checkpointing cycle, it, it does the prepare, the, the fetch, and the reset. Um, and then when it exits the checkpointing mode, it will disable the checkpoint, uh, disable the checkpointing, and then do, do the cleanup. Um, so it's a uh, you know uncomplicated um, execution flow. 
Um, so how about my live migration? Um, well, the, the proposed change does not break uh, live migration. Um, well, it can be used by live migration and avoid, obviously, it need user space support. And, and if, if, um, if the user space has the support for the checkpointing mode, it will improve, it'll help improve the predictability of live migration, live migration of certain uh, workloads, like memory write intensive workloads. Um, um, KareMU uh, currently has a auto auto converge feature that um, addresses this pro uh, problem via CPU throttling. Um, well, uh, it may not be effective for certain workloads, um, but you know if we use checkpointing mode, where it pauses the VM periodically, um, harvests the dirty pages, um, you know we can be sure that the, the migration will succeed. Um, um, so we tried to push those um, changes uh, upstream. Um, we submit the first version. Um, we're currently working on the second version and you know, target for uh, a September. And we got some very good feedbacks from the community and we're looking to um, submit the second version soon. Um, so that's that's it. Any questions? Hey there. I like. Uh, I really like the idea of using a, a, a different data structure to represent a sparse sparse set of dirty pages. That's a conceptually very straightforward optimization. That I'd love to see that go in. However, I don't understand the motivation for making the new uh, or, or a whole new state machine an API to represent basically like a something that could be like KVM get dirty log two, where the kernel decides to return a bitmap or a or a, or a list. Why the why all of the extra states and transitions and da 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 when it to my mind it's it's a it's a, a tiny kind of natural extension of of KVM get dirty log. Right, um, it's not well. It's just a set of new uh, IOCTOs that the user space can use. It's not a state machine per se. Um, it's just how I, I present it as a like look like a state machine, but uh, you know it's how the user space um, should use those IOCTOs to go through the checkpointing um, system. So actually, I agree with Peter in that. Anyway, you have the bitmap. So uh, I would just enable the dirty logging uh, normally, and you would mm, maybe with a flag that says do a VM exit after uh, n uh, uh, dirty pages. That's the size of the list or, or whatever, similar to PML in hardware. And uh, then you may need the IOCTL to clean the the state like to to uh, clear the dirty bitmap based on the contents of the list, so that may be a new IOCTL indeed. But I think the state machine, has, as he called it, can definitely reuse what is already done for uh, the bitmap right. based dirty log because you have the dirty bitmap uh, right, right. too. Yep. So I think uh, it, it's a very complicated uh, new API, and uh, the more complicated the API is, the easier it is to screw it up. And uh, so. It, if you can make it simpler. Uh, one possibility could also be to have some kind of shared memory page so that uh, when you get the VM exit, you already have, uh, without the need to do a new IOCTL, a place where you can fetch the, the, um, the dirty pages and you just need the IOCTL to reset uh, the, the dirty list. Okay. But something even simpler would be, like I said, KVM get dirty log two, and then the kernel it'll know how many dirty, how many dirty uh, pages it would set in that bitmap, and then it would decide, oh, okay, I'll either I'll either return it as a list of of dirty pages, because if that will fit in the buffer, then I know you'll do you know at most the same amount of work you would have done traversing the bitmap, or ah I need to, you know I can't I can't 
there aren't enough list entries, so it's a bitmap, and that would be another return field. That would be super simple, and I think you'd get the, the trade-off exactly that you're looking for. Okay. Um, so, as far as the actual tracking is concerned of the dirty pages, do you do something different, or is it just built on top of whatever we have in KVM? So, what I'm trying to understand is, if suppose there's a, um, you know, the, suppose PML is present, is it is your ch um, um, uh, version is going to just use it automatically, or do you have to do something for yeah, it? Yeah, it piggybacks on the yeah. current KVM mechanism. Okay. Um, it has the mark page dirty thing, then we, you know, the changes just add. A new function that on top of that. Okay, thanks. So, uh, more, speci more specific question about the API: Is there a reason that the prepare and the reset are separate operations? Because as far as I can tell, you'd always use those. Right. Two. I mean, yeah, those can be those can be combined. Um, I agree. Um, it's just how um, we have it work initially, but you know, it obviously can be combined. I mean, logically, it's a kind of test and reset operation. I mean, uh, exchange, like uh, getting the old data and uh, resetting the pointer to zero so that you can, again, start writing new pages. So it exactly what <laughs> 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 Right. That's not the index, not on the, not on the bits, I mean, but the index. <laughs> Uh, hello. Um, do you think we can get a benefit uh, if the uh, if it is, uh, if it is the uh, memory workload in the VM? Uh, because if uh, if the VM runs uh, memory uh, sensitive workload, it it can generate a lot of uh, data pages. It will cause the uh, it will cause a lot of VM exit. And uh, you need to clean the bitmap that will cause the uh, red protect the uh, EBT page tables. So I don't think, uh, in this case, uh, this way is better than the current uh, data page. Uh, yeah, um, I, I think, well, it's better for uh, a high frequency checkpointing system. Um, Mm -hmm. um, so, in, like in live migration, you can have uh, all the memory dirtied. You obviously a list won't do any good. But if you have a checkpointing system where it, it, it pauses the VM periodically and it can um, pause, you know, um, hundreds of times per second, then each those checkpoint, the number of dirty pages is pretty small. So, um, uh, just wanted to confirm. Uh, so you mean uh, during the uh, during the uh, checkpoint, uh, you mean the VM cannot generate lots of data page? Right. So if you have a checkpointing system where it say it checkpoint every um, 100 millisecond, um, then you have to pause the VM every 100 millisecond and and. And the VM won't generate that much dirty memory during that small amount of time. Um, and we have run um, benchmarks and commercial workloads um, collecting data on those kind of runs, and it, um, it only we only see like between 300 to 3,000 dirty pages um, each it, when you have uh, when you're uh, running the checkpointing at a high frequency. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm thinking if we can improve the current uh, uh, data page, uh, we can let the user space allocate the bitmap, and uh, and then uh, and then uh, it needn't uh, copy the data uh, bitmap from uh, KVM model to to the user space. Also, we can partition the memory. Uh, and let is uh, uh, and, and let the bitmap uh, be small, then uh, work the bitmap uh, will be much cheaper. So, do you think if we can uh, improve the current uh, uh, dirty uh, page in uh, in the KVM? You mean the, you think there's a, 
a better way. You mean the, the way to improve the current yeah. bit map yeah. mechanism? Yeah. Maybe we can you know, get together and discuss that. Any more questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming.